Hello there and welcome. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of April 2019, and the weather forecast in Lagos is at an average of 34 degrees. But hold on, it says it will rain today. Great news indeed. What do you know? Tuesday night traffic was absolutely horrible. The whole of Victoria Island through to uh, a route to Oniru and by extension the Leki environs was actually completely blocked. It was like bumper to bumper, chocker block. But um, it's glad to have um, you on today's edition of The Press. I am Tukumbo Taiwo, and we do have uh, Vanguard, we have uh, This Day, we have The Nation, uh, we have The Punch, and later on, if we've got time, we'll be handling our complete sports. With me this morning to discuss the major headlines in today's dailies is public affairs analyst Bolaho Olo Jede. Hi, Bolaho. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How was he getting into uh, the studio this morning? Was the traffic all right? No, uh, yeah, this morning was all right. Okay, um, but, but me yesterday... Me memories of yesterday evening. Mm -hmm. or, uh, yesterday evening was horrible. Yes, yeah. because from what I heard, they actually started from like 1.30 in the afternoon, you know, so I don't know if you were out and about during that period. Or... No, I, I didn't get out until about 4 o'clock. Okay. And it was just a little bit of traffic around Adela Deco, Amado mm -hmm. Um but much later in the evening, when I was going home, the mm -hmm. traffic was very bad. But you know what? I sort of expected it. I, I, it's a little observation I've made over the, over, over the times mm -hmm. that any day there are some matches, there are some important matches. Okay. People tend to want to get home to go and watch those matches. There were two of oh. such yesterday. Oh. And there will be another two today. Oh, so, um, so traffic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then you're watching. Bring, get yourselves prepared. You know, hurry home on time. All right, let's dig right into it. Uh, Vanguard. Let's start with Vanguard. Okay, so uh, the major headline for Vanguard. Um, is insecurity uh, Athenifere Ohanese uh, Pandef, which is the Pan Niger Delta Forum, and others tackle Buhari, and underneath that are a few riders. Athenifere says Nigeria needs retooling to tackle insecurity. Uh, Pandef expresses alarm by saying PDP chides Buhari over rising insecurity. Uh, keep off Igbo land, Ohaneze wants killer herdsmen. And underneath that, as Buhari orders security agencies to end courtesan in rivers. And the last rider underneath that headline is politicians, royal fathers, aiding bandits in the north, says a defense minister. Okay, let's look to the top of the Vanguard newspaper. In the bottom, in the top uh, left-hand corner, we have Zamfara. Bandits kill over 3,000 in five years. That, uh, that's, uh, that's Yari speaking there, and that full story is on page 12. And next to that, we have kidnappers of fire service boss, and others demand 200 million naira ransom. Details of that story available on page 10. Uh, let's look at the bottom of the vanguard now. Let's see if there are some interesting stories. Okay, we've got um, in the uh, bottom left-hand corner of the vanguard, we have Onogen. IPOB accuses NJC of bias. Uh, that story is on page 34. And next to it, we have reps probe Nigerian bulk electricity trading over 19 billion naira loss. The story is available on page 14. Uh, next to that, we have Aviation Union disrupts activities at Lagos Airport, page 11. And underneath that, we have no room for laziness in my cabinet. Fire me wants commissioners, advisors. Let's look at what's available behind. Um, it's just complete sports. It's just sports, sorry. Uh, Chuku, no cause for alarm, says Okenwa. Okay, back to the uh, major headlines. Let's start with um, this insecurity uh, story. Afenifere, Ohanese, Pandef, and others tackle. Buhari. Um, well, uh, what, where do you want to start? Uh, it, it, it's, it's a right call uh, because we cannot have the kind of current situation of insecurity in the nation mm -hmm. and all the elders of the land, all the groups, all the sociocultural groups, uh, can't, they, they just can't fold their hands. They have to call out the president to step in and do what he is hired to do. Uh, security is the primary, is the number one 
uh, role of the state. That is why we have government in the first instance. And when you look at what has happened over the last one week or thereabout, from Zamfara to Rivers to Ebonyi to, I mean, literally the old place. Even in Lagos, there were kidnaps in mm -hmm. Lagos. We heard about the uh, Abuja Kaduna Road kidnaps. And it has been a total mess, escalated in security situation after the elections. Uh, it's, it's, it's something very worrisome. And um, the, the groups are in order to call out the president. We must do something, and urgently for that matter. What do you think he should do, though? That's Buhari himself, okay. after being called out. I, th I think the, the biggest uh, theater of this uh, killings is Zamfara, uh, which, I mean, you see the other part that says over 3,500 people have been killed. Mm -hmm. In some war theaters in the world, they've not lost this number of people in that period. So what we have in Zamfara is a war, it's a war situation. Mm -hmm. And I remember some months ago, the governor had actually said, it, it, it doesn't mind a state of emergency. If that will bring calmness or will remove the insecurity in Zamfara state, the president may need to start looking in that direction. Um, that is just to put a stop to the insecurity Temporarily. The problem in Zamfara is deeper. It's not something that just the military work will finally put a stop to. But at least let's step in, stem the tide, to the tide, so that people can feel free to do their normal businesses in, in, in Zamfara State. Then we go back to solve the more fundamental problem that is bringing this up. Otherwise, we might as well be setting the nation on a big conflagration. Okay. All right. So there are a couple of riders underneath that story that I was thinking you might want to touch on one mm. or two of them. You know, I know you've said, you know, um, Afeni Ferris says Nigeria needs retooling to tackle uh, insecurity. Do you think that's the case? It, it, it does. Uh, retooling in several, several areas. Um, at, the, at the heart of the problem in Zamfara, for example, is the gold, the minerals. It's not just the gold. If you flash back even a decade ago, mm -hmm. Zamfara was that place where we had massive death from lead poisoning. Zamfara was a place where we had some cerebrospinal meningitis problem, and the governor went out to say it was, people's, it was God's punishment for people's sin. And now back to minerals again, causing insecurity. People must flash back at similar spots across the world. Whether you want to talk about blood diamond in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. or you want to think about DRC Congo, which is probably the richest country in Africa, mm -hmm. but has not known peace for four decades, simply because of what is buried under the ground, the minerals. So that is already playing out in Zamfara. And you had a huge, a, a structural issue to fuel and support it. You have millions mm -hmm. of young people who had nothing to do, who society has been unkind to. They are violent, they are, these are the so-called bandits that they are there. So we have them in very high supply in that part of the country. So that is another major problem we must deal with. You see, see look at the writer that says five years. Mm -hmm. This was a brewing problem. It didn't happen one day. These yes. guys that are fighting are not toddlers. They are not, they've grown up in that system mm -hmm. over the years. So there is a serious societal issue yeah. that we must deal with. All right, thank you very much. Let's move on to our next newspaper now. And we're looking at this day. Uh, let's look at the major headlines. Um, just in the middle uh, uh, there, the major headline actually is federal government spends 731 uh, billion naira to subsidize inflated petrol import, uh, says the World Bank. And the rider underneath that is that oil sector productivity has declined despite healthy prices. Above that headline, we have adopt reforms to enhance private sector performance, um, IMF tells Nigeria. And the top of the newspaper itself, we have military ones, monarchs, others aiding armed banditry. Uh, the riders underneath that headline uh, uh, says, says full wrath of the law awaits them. PDP expresses anguish over rising insecurity. Okay, let's look at the bottom of this day now, if there are any stories uh, there. We have just in the um, left hand side uh, left bottom hand corner of we have INEC fixes Kugi by Elsa governor polls for November 2 that story is on page 7 and we do have a picture of uh, uh, president of the senate Dr. Bukala Saraki with uh, Bono um, a picture there on the right hand side of the newspaper so those are the major uh, headlines of this news 
uh, this day newspaper. Let's see what's behind. Um, it's the usual um, article by Okeike Chuku. It says, when Chikelu was minister. If you want to find out more about that, grab a copy of uh, this day. Okay, so back to the major uh, headline. FG spent $731 billion to subsidize inflated petrol imports, says uh, World Bank. What say you? Inflated petrol imports. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I'm going to start from. Okay. Um, we don't have... Inflated, you mean in quotes? <laughs> what it or... means is that the so-called petrol that we're importing, which is based on our consumption, is inflated. Our consumption is nowhere near what we're importing. Now, by extension, we're not just subsidizing our own consumption. We are subsidizing some graft somewhere. The inflation, the inflated part of it. Mm -hmm. Look... I listened to MK Wabiola's speech, 1993, and he was talking about holding NMPC to account. That was three decades ago. If you remember why Sanusi ran into trouble under the last administration, it has to do with his, it started with his noise about how about 20 million US dollars were not accounted for by NMPC. Has that NMPC repented of its sins? I don't think so. Because shortly after Adi Oshun started talking about not full uh, lack of accountability by NMPC, we knew what happened to that young woman. There is, there is certainly a problem with accountability and NMPC. And a good way to, a good way to stop that is to actually reform that industry. We have the PIB that is there. We have not done anything about it for 11 years. We have not done anything about it. Then we also have this issue of subsidy. Under the previous government, we were paying into individual importers. Under the current government, it didn't disappear. We just started, we, 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 we put it on the neck of PPMC. So we took whatever might be the graft that was involving individual importers. We took it behind to NMPC and, it's, uh, and PPMC. That is what we have done. One important thing that these must be done under the new administration mm -hmm. is we must deal with the issue of subsidy. It's okay. a dark hole of unaccountability mm -hmm. in this country. Okay, all right. Um, I wish we had more time. You know, we'd have discussed one or two more headlines, but because of time, let's quickly move on uh, to our next newspaper. Okay, so we've got The Nation. Uh, the Nation has fear over 23 Nigerians on death row in Saudi Arabia. That's the major headline on the uh, nation and also a, a big picture of uh, the Pipers, first graduate of the Nigerian Air Force Pipe Band during their graduation at the NAF Base Airport Road in Abuja. So those are the major uh, stories on the nation. But they've still got a couple more stories in the uh, top left-hand corner. We've got banks shut down in Ondo Communities, page 5. Uh, monarchs indicted in Northwest Violence, page 6. And to the right-hand side of that uh, of the nation newspaper abductors demand three million naira for fire chief senate okays 1.64 trillion borrowing plan uh, u.s china trade war bad for nigeria page 11 and world junior t uh, attorney ticket secured page uh, 47 okay uh, let's see what's behind uh, the nation um uh Olatunji Ololade's um, Reality Bites um, article, and he titled this one, Kindling Wet Wood. Okay. That's All right. Sorry? I said to kindle wet wood to is kindle a wood. tough one. Is a tough one, <laughs> exactly. Okay, but this is an interesting headline. Fear over 23 Nigerians on death row in Saudi Arabia. This uh, story had, you know, from the Times, I think it was since last week or two yeah, weeks. Yeah, it's been in the, in the, in the news. Okay. Um, Saudi Arabia has... Punishment for drug mm -hmm. is death penalty. And they also have several other offenders that are currently in jail in, in, in Saudi Arabia. It's very difficult because, I mean, I listen now to uh, Abike Dabiri. It's very difficult trying to make other countries change their laws because of your citizens. The better way to do it is to come home and educate your citizens about those countries that they are going into so they don't run into trouble when they get there. Having said that, by the time we saw the list, there were some underage uh, uh, people that are involved. I think there must be a way to engage the government of Saudi, especially 
on those underage uh, kids that are in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, Seven-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, all those people couldn't have legally committed crime. They, mm -hmm. are, they, are, they, are, they probably don't even know what they're doing mm -hmm. anyway. You know, now that you actually say that, you know, I, I'm like trying to actually think because some people are of the view that there's a cartel that is actually involved and that these um, people that have been uh, jailed are actually innocent. Did you hear anything like that? Did you see yes, anything it was, like it that? Yes, was, it was part of what uh, Abike Dabiri said. Okay. Um, it is possible, but if it is happening, we need to confront the cartel from here. We will have very minimal success trying to get Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. to bend their laws or to change their law mm -hmm. because of Nigeria and the ram of their, of their laws. Do you think by any chance that if this was like a Western citizen, you know, that something else might have been done prior to her death? Uh, I doubt. Okay. I doubt. Uh, the Western citizen will try to negotiate. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen uh, that with uh, America and Canada and China and mm -hmm. all of that. But most of the times, unless there are established situations in which they review that case and find out that there are windows mm -hmm. under which they can grant concession, uh, otherwise, you face the law. You, call, you do the crime, you do the time. Okay. All right. So is there anything else you want to say about the story before we move on? Um, the the I, I, I think... Um, I, I like the picture, this picture on the front page, though. Okay. <laughs> Just the that I wonder why we are promoting the Scott culture um, I was in Africa. <laughs> uh, here are Nigerians wearing skirts, mm -hmm. um, like, like the uh, Scott, um, as, as pipers, or what do they call them, back, back pipers or whatever. Um, these are playing the, the bagpipes, uh, yes, and the they, wear they wear kilts. They wear kilts playing the bagpipes. Yes. I think... We have to be able to move away from some of those things and mm -hmm. get into things that are Africans. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't see wearing kilt um, mm -hmm. and as, as part of an African uh, culture, culture that okay. we need to talk about. Okay. Um, Bank shutdown in Ondo communities. I believe that is because of the robbery uh, mm -hmm. that happened in that place. Senator case 1.64 trillion borrowing plan. Uh, the borrowings are here again, mm -hmm. and um, we need to watch it. We need to seriously watch it. We are over 24 trillion in debt, in national debt, as, as we speak. And uh, we're going to be borrowing more uh, okay. in the current year because the entire capital uh, expenditure is going to be fi financed by borrowing mm -hmm. uh, for 2019. So that's, that's, that's a huge, huge issue. But like I always like to mention, the real problem is actually not debt, it is revenues. We are not earning money. We're not making money as a country. We are not making money. And the government of the day is mm -hmm. already getting aware of that. We need to move into that space so that we are able to earn money and not all these leakages left and right people just, mm -hmm. you know, I, I hope we get there. I hope we get there too. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we return, we'll have a couple more newspapers uh, uh, to take you through. We've got The Punch. We've also got Complete Sports. But that will all be taking place right after this quick break. Welcome back. You're watching Off the Press right here on Plus TV Africa. Okay, so uh, before the break, we said we've got just a couple more newspapers before we round up. Uh, we've got The Punch, and the major headline on The Punch is uh, Killings in North. The Arewa Consultative Forum meets today, as Minister says, top traditional rulers aiding bandits. Uh, the full story is on page two. Uh, underneath that, we have a rider, criminals killed, 3,526 in Zamfara according to Yari. Uh, there's a number of um, headlines as well. There are lots of pictures um, underneath the major headline where, where it shows uh, residents of Onikpetesi in Ikeja during a hashtag Ensign's uh, protest at Mangoro bus stop along Lagos-Abelkota Expressway. 
So uh, that's, uh, those pictures are underneath the major headline. At the top of the punch, we've got Nigeria should tighten monetary fiscal policies, IMF. The story is on page 27. Uh, underneath that, we've got Amosun Shetima meet over Senate presidency, page 41. Next to that, we have INXS distribution of uncollected PVCs to resume soon, uh, page 21. Police dismiss nine officers for misconduct, page 13. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, we haven't got much time. We need to go into sports. So can I just get you to quickly, in one line, say something about ACF meets today as okay. Minister says? I, I, I would rather say something about the uh, fighting the, the SARS. Okay, the, the NSAS, the NSAS protest. Okay. Um, I, I, I wonder, honestly, whether it is NSAS that we should be fighting for mm -hmm. or fighting against. Or we should be talking about a total reform of the police. Because today, if SARS is dismantled and they set up an agency tomorrow and call it MPEF, um, we would think SARS has disappeared, but the same police will still be there. The okay. same criminality will still continue to go okay. on. So it is a total reform of the Nigerian police that I think we need to pursue. Okay. All right. Uh, well, Alan, thank you very much uh, for your contribution this morning. We're going to leave that there for now as we move on to sports. And joining us now in the studio, we've got Samuel Oloyede, our in-house sports analyst. Uh, we've also got... Um, <laughs> Samson, thank you very much for joining us once again. Yeah, morning. It's a pleasure. Good morning. Okay, so we've got the complete sports. There's a lot, number of stories uh, here. Natural rated fifth worst performer. Uh, NDD comes third in season ratings. Okay, um, we've also got uh, CR7 is back. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Okay, so any story that you want to touch on or talk about or. Well, let, let's get quickly to the UEFA Champions League. That's the toast of um, football fans here in Nigeria. Um, okay. Ronaldo back for Juventus is a good one. That playing against Ajax, Ajax has shown that they're a formidable side that can score lots of goals. And for Juventus, they need someone who can guarantee them goals, you know, because it's the knockout stages. The number of goals you score, especially away from home, will guarantee you, you know, um, possible qualification into a semi final. So, um, Ronaldo being back is um, a good one for them. And do not forget that Juve still have Moise Kane, you know, mm -hmm. on, on the bench as well. Who could okay. always come in to make things happen? Okay. How fit he is in terms mm -hmm. of you know his um, fitness level mm -hmm. is, is yet to be seen. But okay. um, I think he was rushed back for this. Mm -hmm. It's a big game. It's against Ajax. Okay. But it's a big game. All right, we've only got a minute left, so let's touch on this Ihana rated fifth worst performer. Okay. Is that your take, or you think he, he's much better than that? In terms of his quality, his standards, is mm -hmm. definitely much better than that. But um, in terms of how he's fed, you know, the performance on the field of play, whenever he gets a look in, it's been um, awful and he needs to step it up. I think he's going to leave um, Leicester City at the summer. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I think. Okay, where would you place him if you think he's much better than being the fifth worst performer? The fourth, the third, or the sixth, or even the eighth? <laughs> well, well, it's difficult because there are various criteria, you mm -hmm. know, which you, you, you used to, to play as performance. So mm -hmm. um, it depends on where it is. In terms of goal scoring, he hasn't scored lots of goals. Mm -hmm. In terms of assist, in terms of, you know, work ethic. Mm -hmm. But a whole lot of things, the body language, movement on and off the ball on field of play, all these things count. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Samson, that's where we're going to leave it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you much. very much. And that's where we're thank going you. to wrap up on this edition of Off the Press. But I have to thank uh, my uh, our in-house um, analyst, yes, sports, um, well, Samuel Oloyede, and our public affairs analyst, uh, Golahan Olojede. Thank you very much for thanks being for on the program. Much. I am Tukumbo Taiwo saying thanks for watching. We're back tomorrow, same time, at 8.30 precisely for another edition of Off the Press. We'll see you tomorrow.